Hey everybody, it's Jason Creel, and I want to welcome you to another Q&A session where we're talking about all things lawn care, whether you want to talk about your yard, your weed control, your fertilizer, talk about your grass types, or talk about lawn business, lawn equipment, bring on any questions you got. I um, would love to answer them for you. You guys give me a thumbs up if it's coming through loud and clear on the technical side, because that, you know, as you can imagine, that is challenge every now and then with um, dealing with technology and all that but everything looks good from my side so um, <clears throat> we have got a question here we'll start out with I started watching your channel it's from molecular scientist I have Bermuda St. Austin just killed the salad bar and the grass is growing uh, what's the max amount of nitrogen I can throw up Bermuda to make it expand uh, that's a good question I don't know the exact answer, but I know um, sometimes you'll you'll hear advice like put a, a pound of, of in, you know, per thousand square feet every uh, every four weeks or something like that. So um, I think you can go pretty aggressive with it. Now the problem is if you if you use uh, if you're a molecular scientist, you probably understand this concept. So you know I got like some quick release fertilizer. That I'm putting out now, and then I go later and I use a, a slow release fertilizer, which is basically a polymer coated fertilizer that breaks down over time. So the, the problem with like just throwing all a bunch of nitrogen on it right now is, uh, will it make it green? Yes, uh, but you're you're giving it more, giving the grass more nitrogen than it can actually use. So yeah, it'll make it green, but you're wasting a lot of it. So you know that's why uh, doing it in small doses every four weeks or getting a, a quality slow release fertilizer that's going to kind of feed it at a rate which the grass can use it sometimes can make sense as well all right let's go let's uh let awesome yard all right pootie pie something tells me that is not the the pootie pie that is the youtube uh king that's me telling them going live with too much in kick the weeds into overdrive well i mean yeah, I mean, you're, you're feeding the weeds, no doubt. Um, so, you know, that's probably if you got like a yard full of crabgrass and you put a bunch of nitrogen on there, you know, your, your crabgrass just goes nuts and it's just choking out your other, your desirable turf grass. So, you know, you, you're going to want to do your weed control along with fertilizer. You know, they, they go hand in hand. We're not just killing weeds just for the sake of killing them, but it, um, yeah, you're definitely fertilizing the weeds when you do that. So, all right, James Bartley, a friend of mine, says max Bermuda growth comes in at 0. 0.15 pounds of N per week. So, uh, James, sometimes people will say, like, uh, if, if you're putting out, like, a uh, trying to grow it in, you know, what, what do they recommend, like, at a sod farm or something? Are they putting out a, a pound of N per every four weeks, or, or what are they typically? You know, so maybe you can help out the molecular scientists i don't drink coffee i've got some uh see if i can show you here it's kind of a off color green this is my smoothies i drink almost every day if i tell you what it is you might uh, unsubscribe but it's avocado spinach some kind of healthy plant-based protein powder stuff um usually carrots we didn't have any today and then I put like a scoop of ice and some water. And then I've been putting some like coconut milk, you know, kind of halfway keto type drink here that's high fat, low carb. Hopefully, I put peanut butter in there, which isn't exactly keto uh, oftentimes. But anyway, all right. Well, I was, uh, for, for me, just while you guys ask questions, if you have questions, I, I've been out fertilizing yards today. Monday is one of the longest days for me. I, I got up at five something this morning. I'm not actually living in my house right now. So I've got a long drive. I get there and uh, I'm doing construction in my house. So I kind of check on that and get everything set up. And I had a couple of interesting things. I, I had some new customers I had to go take care of. I had uh, one customer had a fungus he was concerned about. So I had to get a fungicide for that. I had to get, uh, I was trying to get these azalea lace bugs so i put out a, a product for that did some different things but mostly just fertilizing okay that's what i'm um, doing most of the time so 
All right, can you recommend a good liquid fertilizer? I'm trying to think of the name of the uh, the one company that I that, that I see advertised all the time. I, I don't use the liquid fertilizers. I buy my I do buy my products from uh, Harold's, and they James my uh, on here answering the question. He's my sales rep with Harold's, but and I know they have liquid fertilizer, but I use grain. I, I mean, my understanding is you're, you're paying more for liquid, you know? So I, anyway, I understand there, there's some situations where it makes sense to use liquid, but for me, it, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense for my business. I'm sorry, not a lot of help on that one, Eric. All right. This time of the year, uh, POA and POA annual and POA trivialis go nuts. What are good strategies for post-emergent control sh uh, short on brushing with glyphosate? Uh, ben, what, tell us where you, um, what kind of grass you're dealing with, and that would be that would be helpful because I said we I deal with warm season grasses. We got poa annual all the time, and and that's our main poa we deal with. So when we say poa, we're talking about poa annual. Uh, but uh, so poa trivialis, I don't think is in my area, but I do see people talk about it a lot. Okay, um, now how to kill poa like in a cool season lawn? It to me would, would be a mystery because most Anything we're going to use to kill it with is not going to be favorable for a cool season line. Now, I don't mean there's not a strategy, but I mean, um, you know, being the, the main thing you want to want to do is put out your pre-emergent in the fall and see if you can get ahead of it next year. Uh, and then depending on where you live, I'm assuming you're maybe a little bit further north than me because I'm in Alabama and our pole is, is starting to fade a little bit, to be honest with you. And it's the grass has turned green. It, it's not as noticeable. So um, anyway, I, I know I had to answer your question. In a in a warm season lawn, we use like for poa annual. Again, I'm not sure if these are for poa trivialis or not, but we use uh, revolver. We use katana, Celsius, Certainty. Uh, anyway, th there's a number of products. Tribute Total, you know. But again, those are all warm season grass products. All right. Uh, this is for the molecular scientist. J James uh, agreed with me there that, yeah, if you're going to max it out, a pound of in um, per month is putting the pedal to the floor. So that's going to, you know, but you don't get discouraged if you do that next week and you don't see a whole lot happen. OK, um, it, it's that, that Bermuda is going to really start kicking in when it gets hot. So. Uh, May, you know, it, it starts growing. But I mean, for me, at least my it seemed like July and August and even September, are like peak months for growing Bermuda, because I and the reason I know that uh, well, one reason I growing my own grass at my own house, I put sod out the last two years, kind of plugging it and done it when it was hot. And, and I think uh, it take forever to even get it rooted, you know, but then it, it was amazing how much ground it would make up just in the last, you know, August, September time frame. All right, should I go out and buy the over, overseeing spread of Wiser? Something tells me that there's some typos in that. I'm sorry, Justin, you're going to have to, that one's, I can't, I'm sorry, I can't understand that. <laughs> see, see if you can. Uh, I'm not sure if you, I do voice uh, text a lot, and some of my voice texts come out looking like that. So, Bill and Fairhope. I know where Fairhope is, if that's Fairhope, Alabama. Uh, and I drink the same thing with avocado. Fairhope's one of those towns that where uh, they won't let you have big billboards. You got to have little short billboards because they're aesthetically more pleasing to the community. All right. If you can see this, say hi. Hello to the Perfectionist Touch lawn care. Now, Perfectionist Touch, if, you, if you'll if uh, you engage with me here a little bit, sometimes I, I don't mind your name, but sometimes how are you truly a perfectionist? Because sometimes I feel like if, like I've got hundreds of customers, and if I'm like a perfectionist, that can make it difficult to, uh, you know, when, when every yard doesn't look perfect, like how do you handle that if that's kind of your personality? So I, I'd be curious to know, do you struggle um, or does all your lawns look perfect? You know, so if they don't look perfect, is that difficult for you to deal with sometimes if you're a, a perfectionist by nature? Is change up and certainty a good combo to blanket, to blanket spray? This is from Jesus over in Georgia. 
Hey, Zeus, <clears throat> I've got a change of uncertainty mixed up, but I don't blanket it. You know, that that's going to be, if you start blanketing um, certainty, especially, you're not going to make a very good profit on the, on the situation. So, you know, I would say, uh, I know you and I have talked about this in some situation, you, you can blanket your three-way, like your uh, triplet and it is the one we use from New Farm. You blanket that and it gets rid of a lot of your broad leaf weeds and things like that. And then uh, there's certain weeds uh, and you being in Georgia, you're going to have a lot of the same weeds I do. So like if I blanket those yards in my first uh, round one, round two, then what what's left? You know, in my area, what's left is uh, yellow wood sorrel or oxalis is, is one that's left. It's, uh, now if I get bit by mosquitoes, I don't know what I'm going to do out here. Um, and you may hear some frogs in the background. I'm in a screened in porch, but I think there might be a hole in the door and I see a mosquito flying around, probably attracted to the light. But anyway, you want to go around and spot treat those weed like field matter. Uh, matter of fact, I think I showed you field matter, Jesus. And uh, those are ones you can go and get with the change up. And certainty, you know, is great for grassy weeds uh, in a warm season lawn, but it also is good for sedges and things like that. So, yeah, I mean, I mix those up. Excuse me. I'm trying to get this mosquito. I I'm still answering your questions. I just got to get this, you know. Keep this thing from getting me. All right. Best residential lawnmower with a five inch cutting height. Uh, I'm trying to think if my lawnmowers, you know, the ones I have are not residential, but I mean, they, I think they go down to like an inch and a half is the lowest. I'm trying to think what the highest is. I don't know if, if they go to five inches or is it, is it four and a half or, um somewhere in that range i mean i would be curious jb what what kind of grass are you cutting at five inches um and when you say residential mower i mean you talking about a push mower from home depot or are you talking about you know a residential model zero turn so if you can expand on that maybe we can uh, talk about that for a second just bought an ATV sprayer. Any tips for learning how to spray the proper mixture of prodiamine? I have a two acre lot. Okay, that's, that's great. <clears throat> um, so some of them ATV sprayers, it seems like I've seen, they might, maybe they hold like what, 20, 25 gallons or something. So maybe, maybe more, I don't know. Just uh, tell me a little bit about your sprayer. And then what you're gonna need to do is calibrate your sprayer. So we did a, a video, if you Google, um, lawn sprayer calibration and then put lawn care life or something on YouTube. I imagine it's going to come up, uh, but we're out in a, a gravel parking lot spraying. And what we did was mark off like 10,000 square feet or maybe 5,000 square feet. I can't remember. And so what you do is, is let's say you put water in your spray. Now this will get you close. This ain't, might not dial in the exact, you know, uh, milliliter here, but this is this ought to get you close. So let's say you've got uh, 20, and, and you could do it in your yard, you don't have to have a parking lot, but let's just say you've got a 20 gallon sprayer, and I'm just throwing a number out there, and you fill it up and you go and you spray your yard, and your yard is 10,000 square feet, and it uses all 20 gallons. Well, then you know, hey, I just used two gallons for every thousand square feet. Does that make sense? Uh, so if you use 20 gallons over a 10,000 square foot yard, you're using two gallons per thousand. You need to find out what that number is for you, uh, G-Grip, on your four-wheeler that you're riding or ATV. Because if you're, you know, and, it, and that's going to have a lot to do with how fast you're driving the thing, okay? So if you're, you know, if you're driving it at, at 15 miles an hour or five miles an hour, that's going to make a big difference on the amount of spray. So you need to know, at my steady speed and the volume that it's putting out, how many gallons of water am I spraying per thousand square feet? At that point, it becomes a simple math formula. So let's just say you're using the, uh, the powder version of Prodiamine. I'm using like Resolute and it, um, anyway, so it, it comes at by, you do it a, a weight. So I'm doing it by the per pounds, pounds per acre. So let's say my round one, I'm doing it. Now, if you get the liquid kind, it's going to be ounces. Okay. But let's just say for, for the sake of what I, uh, what I do for my business, you're doing 0.75 pounds, 
pounds per acre of prodiamine, which is what I put out in my round one before the crabgrass germinates. Now, if you if you live in Georgia, I just tell you to put your prodiamine up till next year. OK, if you live uh, in Alabama or Mississippi or Florida or parts of most of Texas, maybe all of Texas. I mean, so, I, you know, I'm hoping you're living further north than we are or just or just save your prodiamine because your crabgrass is probably already germinated. But if you feel like your crabgrass hadn't germinated uh, and I don't know the answer to that, uh, then you, you then go ahead and put your prodiamine. So let's just say you, you've come up that you're spraying two gallons per thousand square feet. It may be one gallon. It may be 10 gallons. I don't know. Um, but if it's two, then what you do is you, you take the, the amount of volume of water you're putting in your tank. So let's just stick with 20. That's what we said. We're going to put 20 gallons in there. We're going to divide that by two because that's how many gallons are spraying per thousand square feet. So 20 divided by two. And then we're going to divide that by 43.56 because we're, we're, we're going to, if you divide it by two, it's going to tell you how many thousands of square feet you can spray but then we divide by 43.56 is going to tell us how many acres we can cover with that 20 gallons at two gallons per thousand square feet i'm sorry if this is confusing I, I can't write it down right now but when you when you do that that number the amount of water divided by the number of um <clears throat> your rate that you spray divided by 43.56 that gives you the amount of acres you can cover with that 20 gallons and then uh, let's just say it comes out to 0.75 acres, okay? And then you multiply that by um, what, whatever your rate is. So if, I, if you're doing the 0.75 pounds per acre that I said that I do, then you say, okay, 0.75 acres times 0.75 pounds per acre. And whatever that gives you is how much you put in the tank with some surfactant. Well, if you just do a prodiamine, you won't need any surfactant, but if you mix it with like a uh, post emergent, then it would help to have some surfactant. All right, I think that was confusing enough. Ben has done give us a five dollar tip. Thank you, Ben. Uh, and I'm in Virginia controlling tiff, tough Bermuda. So, yeah, being in Virginia, I mean, uh, you're going to be a little bit slower. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, you, you may still be a few weeks away for your. Uh, Poa starts fading out. And I, again, I'm not much help on that triviality stuff, but you, you can see if it's on the label. Like, like if you put Celsius and Certainty together, I mean, that works on, on Poa annual. Uh, just one or the other also works, but it, it they're slow. You know, Revolver works. Uh, a product called Negate works. I mean, they all, all these products work. But again, at some point, you just say, is it worth it anymore? I mean, that stuff, my grass is starting to turn green. Your Bermuda is probably still. You know, got lots of brown in it but once it starts turning green the pole doesn't stick out so bad and it's like i'm just gonna let the heat kill it and then i i put out spectacle flow on my bermuda yards in the fall and try to prevent most of it or you could use prodiamine it just doesn't work as good so you know i'd say uh, nick you know if you want to play around trying to kill a post-emergent that's fine next year try to prevent as much of it as you can by putting out your pre-emergent before you get that cool weather in the fall uh, for you in Virginia, that that could be, you know, I don't even, I don't know, early September, something like that. And then, um, and then if you if you want to go the post immersion route, you know, try to get it early, like January, February. Y'all may have snow on the ground. I'm sorry, I'm chasing this woman's ski the whole time, and uh, it's going to be slow to die when it's cold. But what it, what it'll do, even though it's not going to just die overnight, it's it will make it stop growing as fast. And it won't be as nose play start it might turn a little yellow and then when the grass turns green it's not sticking up you know big and nasty um and then two i think like what you can do too is if, it, if it's getting kind of mature like really mature like it is here in my area you can just mow your yard real low and scalp it good and that kind of I don't think it likes that. And, and that'll also help your bermuda start to fill in where the pole is not nearly as noticeable Appreciate the question, Ben, and the tip. Uh, can you please recommend a brand of glyphosate that's more effective in killing all the grass and weed and the lawn? You know, I mean, you can get, you know, all these places, Home Depot, Tractor Supply, Walmart. I mean, there's just about everybody's got a 41% glyphosate products. I mean, they, it, it works. I don't know if you necessarily need a... Um, I mean, it looks like you're saying kill all the grass and weeds on the lawn. So, you know... 
Glyphosate is a, what we call a non-selective herbicide. So just I hope you understand you're, you're going to kill the entire yard if you do this. So, um, yeah, they, they will just about any glyphosate product will be effective in doing what you're trying to do. But just make sure you know you're, you're not killing just the weeds. You're, you're wiping out your yard and starting over is what it sounds like. All right. Well, you ever have Alan Hain as a guest? On, on your show as a guest i would love to have alan on here uh i could reach out to alan he i would consider him a friend and uh, he we went fishing about two months ago we had a good time went down i got to see alan's we were in the tampa area uh, and got to see his office set up which was really cool uh alan was on the youtube my youtube channel alan has spoken at my last two lawn care life conferences and all around likable guy and very hospitable to us while we were down there in his territory. And uh, I love hearing Alan, he's a wealth of knowledge. And so uh, that's a great suggestion. Thank you, Eric. How long have you been doing YouTube? Shoot, man, I've been on YouTube a pretty good while. I think in, think in like 10 years, I, I froze the lawn care community. I'm one of the earlier ones I didn't, you know, start really putting a lot of time into it until maybe four or five years ago. Um, but I, a matter of fact, I might go back and show uh, some of my earliest videos at some point um, because I still remember some of those early videos. And I'm not saying they're good or bad or whatever, but uh, yeah, I've been on here for a while. My daughter is saying hi, Jason. Okay. Hello to your daughter. Can I mix Celsius and Sedgehammer and one spray app on St. Augustine grass in South Florida? Uh, would that impact the growth of St. Augustine? Uh, pretty sure you can. I mean, you want to, um, you know, I, I mix products like that all the time. You know, like a, a Celsius is, is great because it can have some effect on some grassy weeds and also on some broadleaf weeds. Sedgehammer obviously is good for sedges. So, um, you know, I, I don't I don't I don't be careful here speaking too definitively definitively because I don't know. Um, I know St. Augustine is can be sensitive and certain varieties of it can be more sensitive than others. Uh, like the floor tam, I believe it is the one that that I hear about. So, you know, just just be careful. Follow the label and you may start off with uh, not just go max rate on your Celsius. Uh, but yeah, I don't see any problem with mixing those two products. All right. So he's uh, looking for a zero turn. This is a guy that was JB was asking earlier about a recommendation on a zero turn, a residential model zero turn that will um, cut at five inches. As far as the height goes, I, I'm sorry. I, I would, you just have to look at the specs to see if they cut five inches, you know, I would, uh, hold on, I can't stop, I got to sneeze here. Give me just a second. Um, I, I would, I tell people this when, when they're starting a lot of business, okay? So I deal more with people starting a lot of business, but I, I think I can help you on this situation, JB. You know, for me personally, if I had, if I, my budget was $3,000, or maybe you told me what your budget was, that would help, but you don't, don't feel pressure to do that. Uh, but if you, if you had $3,000, I wouldn't go personally to the big box store and buy the lowest end zero turn that they have. I mean, I just wouldn't, uh, which is about what they cost, maybe $2,500, $3,000, because I, I've been on one of those and I'm not naming any brands or anything. I just, when you go the lowest bottom of the barrel, I mean, yes, will it zero turn? Yeah, it will. But that's about the only thing that makes that thing, you know, any better than your normal garden tractor. Um, to me, it makes more sense. And again, this is my maybe some of my personality. I would almost rather get on the Facebook marketplace and try to find the next level up mower again. If I'm working like three thousand dollars, that would that had like a hundred hours on it. You find somebody that didn't use it much or they're moving or it's just in their garage and just very, you know, even if it's five years old with a hundred hours or even 200 hours, I mean, I wouldn't go get, you know, some, something that a lawn care service been run up 2000 hours on and telling you how great it is. I, I wouldn't get that one because I guarantee you they would run that thing in the ground. But, um, but anyway, if you, uh, 
you know, I, I just think there's some value in going one step up. So, you know, if your budget's like four to five thousand, well, now you got a lot more options. You know, I mean, you, you can get a, a nice mower that's slightly used or you can get like, um, you know, like my dad had a X mark uh, radius, I believe was the, the old one that, that they had. So um, Toro's got the shoot. I'm trying to remember the one that the Titan, I believe it is, that's at. Yeah, I mean, you can buy them at Tractor Supply. They're selling, I think they're 5000 uh, bucks. Again, I don't know the, the, the deck height on those. Um, but just about every manufacturer, whether it be, uh, you know, I tell people all the time, I, I like, I like um, X-Marks, I like Toros, I like Hustlers, I like Skag, I like Gravely. I mean, they all kind of have these different levels of like super duper nice commercial, like, standard commercial like low-end commercial high residential and entry level residential um, so if you to me if you could get to that second level at least high-end residential you can get a, a pretty quality mower so that would be like a skag um what is it freedom z or something like that or they hit the patriot and the uh, yeah i'm not familiar with all the different models and everything but anyway hope that helps and uh you know, depending on the size yard you're mowing, you may have told me that, I'm sorry, but you'll, you'll consider whether you're going to get a 60-inch, 52-inch, 48-inch. Um, 48 and 52 are pretty versatile, but if you just got a big flat yard and you're just mowing your own yard, then to me, bigger is better. All right. I'm enjoying the videos of your neighbor's yard. Was that change up you spot spray with in the latest video? So, yeah, I uploaded a video. I think it was this morning. I'm at my neighbor's yard, and uh, it's been pretty much neglected from a weed control standpoint for a long time. And uh, so I got out there and sprayed the initial application, wiped out lots of hen bit and all this cool season weeds. And there was very little Bermuda, just common Bermuda out there and um, a little bit of centipede. And then what was left this time was a lot of field matter and a lot of creeping Charlie and some of these tough weeds that weren't gonna die when I sprayed a triplet on it. And so I went in there and I fertilized it with some quick release fertilizer and then I, I went around and sprayed spot sprayed with change up to try to knock out that creeping charlie change is a great product for creeping charlie and for field matter so i expect over the next few weeks that a lot of those weeds are going to die as the weather warms that bermuda is going to start filling in i really think as i continue doing those videos it, you know by the summer that's going to be a presentable yard not going to be immaculate because it's got different two different grass types and it's not Hybrid Bermuda is just common Bermuda, which just that it has a coarser leaf blaze, just doesn't look quite as good. So anyway, what do you think of the following plan? Plug areas with no Bermuda, add manure, water, fertilizer. Is there a method you have perfected? So I, I did a quite a few videos about this on my channel last year and the year before. And I, I've got um, four acres at my house. Now it's not, I mean, I was a house and so it's not all grass, maybe three acres of grass, maybe maybe a little bit more. Some woods involved with that and a workshop and things like that. But anyway, let's say three acres of grass. Well, I, I plugged the front yard uh, two summers ago. And then last summer, I plugged the backyard. And uh, yeah, I, I bought one of these things. Is, I mean, I just one time I had the sod farm chop it up in plugs and I just threw it out. Now, the problem was. Uh, I did. I waited too late. It was so hot, and I had trouble keeping it water because it's such a big area. But no, I, I love your strategy there. Um, I would I would plug it, and I would do it as soon as you as you can, and let it go ahead and, and get rooted while it's not so hot, and maybe you get some rain, or you can keep it watered. And that way, it'll be rooted when the really aggressive growing months come. So like June, July, and August, you can really grow some grass. So I would. I would just throw it out, get it started. I mean, even my backyard, I didn't eat. I just bought two pallets of sod and we put them on a trailer and a truck and just went around and we just threw them out. Just throw, you know, wherever they landed, they landed. And then this year, uh, trying to level it out, we chopped it up with a tractor. So I got pieces of Bermuda everywhere and it looks, you know, it doesn't look that great. But I, I'm not worried about it because I actually want to drag it with a box plate. And I'm telling you, this year, it, for the first time, it's already rooted 
going into the growing season where before I was putting it out in the summer, it take took it a while to get rooted because I wasn't able to water it like I should. So yeah, get it, get it out there, get it rooted and then start fertilizing. Don't, don't feel like you got to put the fertilizer out, you know, day one. Um, all right. Plug and Bermuda works amazingly fast, even with no fur getting the right sun and we're going. So yeah, yeah, it definitely works. I mean, I, like, like if I would have, sod in my yard with zoysia solid i guess it would have cost about a hundred thousand dollars I, I don't know uh what does it cost to sod three acres solid in zoysia and that would have been beautiful of course i wouldn't be able to keep it water but um with bermuda i did like five pouts on the front which is really more than i needed and then i literally did like two pouts on the back which was to cover like two acres. so anyway it, 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 Okay, being with John understands yeah, great. Oh yeah, in one. I'm going with. I'm just read them for time. All right. Comments to not work for some reason. I can't put them on the screen. Can I apply a post? Uh, there we go. Start working again. Uh, in the next few days, non irrigated lawn in Charleston, South Carolina, for a reference. Okay, let me think about this here. Um, you know, if you're gonna, if you're gonna, so you're wanting to, to go ahead and overseed it now. My concern with that would be, and I don't know if it's hot enough to overseed your putting your centipede seed out right now. I think you need to wait till it gets hot, like 85 degrees hot. And I don't think in Charleston, maybe, maybe it's, I don't think you're hot enough. I mean, I, I wouldn't be in a super hurry to do that. And um, I would look at the yard. I mean, if you had like a big crabgrass problem in the past where you feel like you need to go in there with the dimension or, uh, you know, so if not, then I wouldn't worry about it. You know, but so I, I think you got a couple problems here in, in your logic. And I'm just trying to I'm just giving you my my thoughts. OK, um, if you did, the, it, it, I think you need to wait before you oversee. And then by by the time you wait that long, I don't think your dimension is going to do that, do you any good. Because if there's crabgrass coming up, it's going to probably be too mature to kill it. So, and you don't want to do your your dimension right now because that could hinder your seed from rooting. So, I think if it was me, I would wait about a month till it gets hot, then do the centipede seed, and just get as much of it to grow as you can, and then and then just don't worry about the dimension. That that would be the strategy I would take. But if somebody else uh, in this watching wants to comment on that. Have some other suggestions and go ahead. What are the best months on the Gulf Coast for pre-emergent protiamine? I did September and mid-March mixed with Celsius in March. Bill, I believe you're a little late on your uh, on your March application. September is probably good most of the time. Uh, you might even be a little early on that one because down on the Gulf Coast, uh, and, you know, better early than late most of the time. But what we do is, you know, again, I'm up near close to Birmingham. So we get colder, obviously faster in the in the fall. And then um, you guys are going to warm up quicker in the in the spring. So, you know, I'm afraid that by mid-March, I even here in Birmingham, our crabgrass has already germinated many, many years and um, probably this year as well. So if I were you, I would go pre-emergent like, January, February, you know, maybe even early February, because I know sometimes even by late February, we already have visible crabgrass. 
Um, so go, you know, put out in January just to be on the safe side. And then um, as far as your fall application, you, you want to get it down and get it watered in before you get those cool nights, you know, down in the low 50s or whatever. So for you guys, I mean, that might not be till November. I, I don't know. So, you you know, if, if, if I had to tweak your schedule a little bit, I'd go earlier on your your spring app or your winter app, do that January, and I'd go later on your fall app. And then we are mixing post emerge in there. So like on the fall app, if you're doing prodiamine, you know, we put um, simazine in there with it. So hopefully, you know, it, it, let's just say that the prodiamine didn't get all the POA, maybe the maybe the simazine will get it. Or if you're late, then simazine might get some of our germinate. So, all right. James is saying, to Oliver E. Let me, let me see if I can figure out what Oliver E. Oliver said, can I mix Celsius and Sedgehammer in one spray app on St. Augustine in South Florida? Would that impact the growth? All right. James says, James is my friend and my mentor in the line business. He says, Bayer is about to release a Celsius plus Sedgehammer uh, product, and I bet it will be labeled for St. Augustine. I think they will call it Celsius plus or similar name. Yes, I have heard about that and forgot about that. It's um. They're just going to mix those conveniently for you in the bottle. So it, which is, you know, you think about it, it's kind of smart on their part because it's going to be what we're often doing as lawn care professionals is mixing two products like that. So they're going to go ahead and mix it for you. So then now you got a product that will work on sedges uh, and also Celsius. You know, the good thing about Celsius, it also can have some effect on, on Kalinga, you know, not just like your yellow and purple nut sedge. So, I mean, that would be a, a pretty cool mixture that, that you know, for somebody wanting to really simplify things, could use that in a lot of applications. All right, I bought Prodiamine 65G. Can it prevent the spread of Bermuda? I have not put some down because some people say it prevents root growth and spray. Is that true? Uh, well, I've, I've heard mixed reports on this. I I, I guess I want, want to know, and again, I'm sorry, I'm getting, I know you've asked some questions on here. I, I can't remember if you're trying to, were you trying to do something to your ER? Let me look back here. Oh, plug-in. Okay. All right. Well, and, and where are you at? Maybe if you could uh, let me tell you where you are, molecular science, what part of the country, and that might be helpful. But here, here's what I did last year and this year, to be honest with you. Um, I wanted to my Bermuda to spread. And it, 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 to me, it, you're kind of calling a situation. So if you, if you don't spray a pre-emerge in my situation, I was in the yard had so much crabgrass in it the year before that you get out there and you start fertilizing, you fertilize your crabgrass and it's hard. Your Bermuda doesn't have anywhere to go. It's too much competition. OK, so I said, I, I've got to put a pre-emerge out, even if it hindered some rooting. And, I, you know, I mean, I'm like, I'm not going to have a whole yard full of crabgrass again because the Bermuda has virtually no chance. Then there's nowhere for it to go. So I put it out. I just did it at a little bit lower rate. So I did like uh, the, the powder. I did like a, uh, what I do, 0.55 pounds per acre. And I did it like early January, maybe even December. And I thought if I can just, you know, get it to, my, my thought was prevent the crabgrass, but don't put so much out so that by the time the Bermuda really starts spreading, the prodiamine's kind of worn off. So, and I'll be honest, I didn't see much root pruning or hindering from spreading at all. So again, I don't know where you live. You, you may be too late for prodiamine to really do a lot for, for your, for you this year anyway. Um, so you, you might not even worry with it because you're kind of too late. You might have to go in with a post-emergent and try to fix some of your problems that way. Your thoughts on using something like a permagreen versus a tank spray? That's a great question. I definitely got thoughts on that. Um, you know, I had a permagreen. I've got a, a ground, what used to be known as ground logic. Now they brand it under Ferris. And I've had, I've got the, uh, what was the X Mark LTS. Now they brand it kind of under the, the Z turf brand that like Z spray and all that. Um, so those are the machines I've got. And I tell you, there, there's pros and cons to both. Uh, you, you know, even if you, you ride, if you got a ride on machine, you still need a, a, at least a nurse tank to fill that machine up with. So there's a lot of advantages to having a tank sprayer. 
I just about always spray my properties with my tank sprayer. And, uh, you know, I buy my Graham spray equipment. They sponsor my channel. And so, you know, thankfully that they're in uh, Douglasville, Georgia. And I bought them for them before they sponsored the channel. But they're, they're great. And what I do with my uh, – the, one of the reasons is I, I mix multiple products in there. And like that prodiamine, for instance, it, it's bad to cake up on your filters and all that. Well, you know, in my big spray tank, I've got a big – filter. I've got mechanical agitation on one side, jet agitation on the other. I mean, I'm getting a lot of good agitation. I'm spraying with a lot more volume and I just don't have to worry about it clogging up anything. And, but the main advantage is, you know, mixing all these products together and, and I've got some hills in my area and I've got, you know, not every yard is just a flat football field. And so if I need to go up there and get in an awkward situation on a hill, it, it's, I'm not trying to turn a machine around. Now, I, I, those same machines are fantastic. So I, I'm very pro ride on machines. Um, I use mine mostly for granular and I'm spot spraying with them. But when I get a big property that, that's flat and open, you know, I love using them. And if I lived in Kansas and it was super flat all the time, I love using them. But I, I think the challenges sometimes with the ride on equipment is, you know, for us dealing with like Bermuda grass, Literally, if I if I leave three inches next to the flower beds that I don't spray, I can just about guarantee you that three inches is going to be covered in weeds. I mean, it, it just is it's fascinating. I mean, how the weeds are so invasive in a Bermuda lawn. So like, I need, sure enough, great coverage. Well, that, you know, in some ways, that's an advantage being on a ride-on machine if you're just going steady and you got a nice, even application, more so than doing it with your hand. But in other ways, doing it by hand, I can get in awkward spaces. I can lean down and get close to the shrub and get within, you know, a half inch if I need to. Uh, maybe that's a little exaggeration, but uh, I can get close without worrying about getting on the shrub. And, and when you're dealing with uh, windy days, sometimes it's, it's a lot easier for me to control that with uh, by hand with more water volume. And then like a, a real fine, like some of the permagreen in my ground lodges, some of them only spraying a quart per thousand square feet. It's not a lot of water. So you can imagine how what wind would do that. So anyway, pros and cons, they're both great machines. Um, if I lived in an area that was super flat, I would probably use mine more um, for spraying and blanketing yards. But in my current situation, I spray most of them with a tank. And that's what just about everybody in my area does. And, but I definitely use the ride ons and I love those things. South Texas. Okay. I bet in South Texas, yeah, I don't have a lot of hills. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm getting my conversations confused here. If you're in South Texas, man, I wouldn't even bother with no prodiamine at this point. You, you, you kind of missed the boat on that. If you want to, you do what I'm doing. Like if you um, got a Bermuda lawn, if I get a new customer, I'm putting, put a, um, Queen Clorac in there, like a product like Drive Accelerate XLRA mix with Prodiamine. And I'm trying to basically kill the crabgrass that's already germinated and the Prodiamine just in there, just in case it hadn't, some hadn't germinated, maybe some crabgrass, maybe something else. So uh, anyway, great question here. Can I make a hundred million dollars in lawn care? Uh, I'm sure you can, man. Let me know how that goes. Um, fitness, haha, you need a different career. 100 million, I would maybe recommend like professional basketball player is is a good route for that. I mean, you need to be like kind of Hall of Fame, Hall of Fame. But you can, if you're a professional basketball player, like even a, a bench warmer, you can probably get 10 million pretty easy. Um, but if you're like, sure enough, all star level player, 100 million shouldn't be. Nothing. What fungicide and insecticide do you use, Jason? Uh, today, what I use? Headway G. And I know I've also used Fame. Um, but I've used other ones. I usually call my friend Jason, tell him the situation and he recommends one. I, I would say this. Um, you want to go kind of broad spectrum, uh, one that, that, that covers a multiple problems and you want one that that lasts longer so for instance today i'm using headway g and you say why would you use a granular fungicide they're they're more expensive yes they are more expensive 
but I had my spray tank filled up, both sides of my spray tank filled up with something that I, that I wanted to use. Okay. So I didn't want to empty the spray tank to put a cheaper fungicide in there. So I just went with the more expensive granular fungicide and I'm reading on the label and it's telling me the rates and it basically said for this protection or something like that for this rate you'll get 28 days of protection so you want to um you know make sure that you that you you get one that covers the disease you're looking for and one that's going to give you a little bit of bigger window of protection you know if it just says seven days or whatever but um, a lot of times like for instance i looked at fungus uh, fungus today and went out there and, and yeah it looks bad in the yard but it's stuff that had actually started back in the fall and, you know, you don't notice it in our warm season turf because over the winter, the, the grass is all dormant. And so everything's brown. Where the fungus is, is brown. And where it's, the fungus is not, is brown. And then what happens? In the spring, the grass starts turning green and there's the spots where the fungus was. But um, today I went out there, the fungus was, was not an active fungus. Usually, you know, when you're looking at like a large patch or something, James taught me most of this and he can correct me if I'm saying anything wrong. But usually there's orange or kind of reddish tint around the perimeter if it's still active so you know today i go out there it's, it wasn't an active fungus but for the customer's sake i put a fungicide out anyway to make him uh sleep better at night and uh put some fertilizer to help that begin to recover so most of those fungicides are not gonna cure the damage the damage is often already done but they can help help it uh, you know prevent it so if you you know in that situation what i need to do it next year uh, in the fall before the cool weather starts coming in about the same time you'd want to do your fall pre and post merge application put out a fungicide to hopefully prevent this from happening next year and maybe also talk to the customer about his watering habits and things like that all right ben says incredible tips thanks again i appreciate you ben and five bucks man you you uh so thank you for being a part of the conversation can i apply 007 Let's see, with dimension for an extra amount of pre-emergent control in June. If I plan on, wait a minute, I feel like I'm, uh, I'm deja vu here. We talked about this already. <laughs> so, um, no, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't do that. I mean, what, what, what's the point of putting that out in, in, in June? I mean, just, just grow your centipede grass when it gets hot and, and don't worry about the, don't don't worry about the dimension this year. You know, if, I, I, that's my advice on that one. Favorite brand of weed eater, like Echo or Steel. Nathan, I like uh, Husqvarna, actually. Uh, my favorite one I ever had, maybe my favorite trimmer of all time. I don't think they make it anymore, but I had a, it was the Husqvarna 326 LS, I believe it was. It weighed nine pounds. And I'm, it's not like I'm so weak, I can't pick up 10 pounds, but I sure like picking up nine instead of 10. Uh, it tends actually fairly light for a commercial string trimmer, but I liked it because you, I like to flip mine upside down the edge with it. Okay. I don't like having a guard, I, you know, things like that. I've done videos on these kind of things, uh, but it, it just worked great upside down. It was light, but it still had decent power. I don't need one that's going to take the siding off the house. Okay. I mean, most of those, but I, you know, I certainly don't want some little crooked neck homeowner grade one either uh, but then when i discontinued that one i got the 525 ls uh, and it was you know hush morning again it, and it, it's fine it has like some kind of ergonomic handle that's supposed to help you not get carpal tunnel or something but anyway i, I like the uh, 326 ls the only thing i don't like they, they kind of real cheap plastic handles on them and stuff but as far as just running and things i think they're great but a lot of steel and echo fans i'm, I'm a uh, being the minority on the Husqvarna. Any advice for taking care of Blumuda lawns? Now, what if I'm going to translate that on here? I'm a, I'm I'm thinking, David, you're uh, you got Bermuda, but you're not excited about having Bermuda. Is that is that right? Maybe clarify on that. But if if, if you got Bermuda and you're not excited about, it, I can I could probably help you. I I I've got Bermuda. I like my Bermuda, but yeah. I, Clarify your question there, and I'll see if I can help you. Real question, tenacity versus changeup. Um, well, you know, we don't. I don't use tenacity. I, I know that a lot of people with cool season lawns use tenacity 
a lot. I use uh, changeup a lot. So, I mean, for, if you're asking me, I go with changeup because that's, you know, applicable to my lawns and what I do. Um, but, you know, yeah, I, you'd have to get saw a cool season guide to know that. But I know changeup, I believe, is labeled for a lot of cool season grasses. It's, uh, it's great for broadleaf weeds. It works fast and it's not um, that expensive. Now, you may have to buy a two and a half gallon jug of it. It might set you back a little bit, but per thousand square feet, it, it's actually a very reasonably priced product. All right. All right. This person was asking about a, a glyphosate product to use and says, do I have to mix 41% glyphosate with water? Yeah. I mean, unless you're trying to kill like a, you know, some, uh, what am I thinking of? Chinese privet or something, and then you you know and get use wear your PPE and uh, Chinese privet. You might just cut it and paint it straight on the, the stump, basically. Um, but yeah, for you know killing, you're talking about just killing your existing lawn. You you're definitely going to want to mix that with water. I mean, um, I'm trying to think of a rate. So like I spray my dormant Bermuda lawn every once in a while with glyphosate in a, in a situation i use 32 ounces per acre that's when it's dormant okay so 32 ounces per acre you know might um i'm trying to think that that i don't know if that would kill all if you're trying to like kill off bermuda it, it's actually a little bit hard to kill even when you're trying to so uh i'm not sure I, as, as a rate if you're like putting it in a backpack spray or something you might go with like four ounces per gallon of water like that if you're doing like a blanket application you could do uh, i don't know um i mean yeah i don't i don't want to be wasteful with it but you know 60 ounces i'm not i'm not sure that was going to kill me a lot but i don't want to crush you guys you got a cool season long i think it probably will kill it it's tough to kill so uh what kind of grass do you have? All right. What stand on sprayer would you recommend starting out two acres of turf commercial sites? Well, uh, you're in the Buffalo State. Where, where, what is that? Colorado? What's the Buffalo State? Um, you know, flat. If you got flat areas and you're you're like really doing two to three acre properties, I mean you, you probably need like some like a Z spray and get out there and just boom, you can just roll with that thing. Um, you know, it for me, I'm doing a lot of smaller properties, so so this I didn't want to pull a trailer. I got a lot of smaller properties, so I go with the smaller machines. I I got a Ground Logic, I got the the Z spray, the LTS, like the small version one they have. So you know, that's, that's some consideration. East Tennessee Lawn Care says, what is up, Jason? I'm much just sitting here talking about yards. What is up with you? What do you think about Dixie Choppers? Man, I don't even hardly see Dixie Choppers anymore. I, I imagine they're still around, but I used to, when I was mowing grass a while back, I would see them Dixie Choppers come rolling in, like just had them huge mud grip tires on them. I thought, man, these things are like, it just they had a, a definitive look to them, then no doubt, you know, it's like you could tell that's a Dixie chopper. I mean, look at the tires now. I don't, but like I said, I, I haven't seen a lawn person in my area, and we don't have a dealer in the area, it might be part of the problem, but I just hadn't seen one in a long time, and, and I, I've never owned one, so I can't comment too much on But boy, they they had a, a custom look to them for sure. I'm kicking it with a Troy built Mustang 42 in seven yards done today with it. Well, man, if that thing works for you go ahead i would say if you're trying to grow and uh, really blow up your lawn business you need to probably upgrade nothing i'm not poking fun at your mower or anything but it, a, a bigger fancier nicer mower is gonna um, one make you look more professional to the customer but then also just help you be faster and more efficient in your business and provide a, a you know it's going to save you time so I would um, look to upgrade that if possible and continue to get more customers. But man, you may be just thinking, hey, I've got this mower. It doesn't cost me anything. Maybe it's paid for and I can mow some yards on the side. So anyway, just giving you my thoughts on that. Otmar, hope I'm saying that right. Garcia says, hello. Nice to see you. 
And let's see here. I shrunk my comments here. Um, let me just a second, find where I was at. All right. What do you think about Dick's Chops? We did that. And sorry for the basic question, but is there a problem to plant the grass, St. Augustine, close to a wall of the house, or should I leave an edge between the grass or house? I don't see any problem with that. Now, if you, again, I don't know what kind of foundation you've got on your house. If you're going to be trimming along there with a, a string trimmer, you know, and, and you, you have something that's been painted, that might be a little bit of an issue because you're going to be chipping the paint off. But if it's a situation where you got brick, you know, that's probably not much of an issue at all. I mean, it sounds like are, are you I like shrubs personally, a little little border, a little color and a little landscape design. But if you want to go straight grass, you can do that as well. I want to get a Gravely Echo weed cutter pickup truck and start my business myself. All right. Um, well, you, hey, what do they say? Aim for the. Aim for the moon. If you miss, you'll land amongst the stars. Is that right? He's, he asked earlier if we could make $100 million in lawn care. So, um, yeah, you might not get $100 million in the first year. But, yeah, Gravely is a great brand. I, I like Gravely, Echo. Um, you know, they make good good products and get – yeah. You start off as – lawn care, I still believe, is a great business. The demand is huge. It's very easy to get into. And a lot of people have made a lot of money doing it. And a lot of people ha have just made a good living and enjoyed what they're doing, being outside, working, making things look great and serving their uh, customers in their community. So I think it's a great business and I hope it goes well for you. And I will come back and ask questions along the way if you need help. All right. A 34 inch Arian ZTR five hours in the season thing is quick. Okay. Yeah, I had a 34 inch, what was it? Husqvarna one time. And I, I got it. I mean, I could literally, I think I got it and didn't even have a push mower. I was like, this thing will fit through almost any gate that a push mower would. And uh and, and it was okay. Uh I actually I had a I think that one actually was a 30 inch. It was crazy skinny, but I had a 34 inch gravely zero turn that was is actually really nice and, and left a great cut. The Husqvarna one I had was not as good, but still it was like you just need it in a pinch to get this little backyard and you don't want to push most. So yeah, I, I'm familiar with the kind of motors you're talking about. What's a common reason for some areas of zoysia slightly yellowing, no pets? Well, he took out one uh, reason with a dog peeing on there. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know where you are, but we got hit with a, a late frost by a week and a half ago. That turned just about my whole yard yellow. Now, I, I, my yard's mostly Bermuda. Uh, sometimes this time of year, people are saying, why is my yard not green and why is it you know yellow? And, and, and sometimes you just got a lot of still got a lot of dormant grass there from the previous year and it needs to be cut lower in my opinion to get rid of that and let let the sunlight get down the roots and start bringing the green life to the yard so i'm not sure um in your particular situation sean but um there's there's probably if, if i don't know if you, is it like sure enough yellow or is it just kind of like dormant grass still hanging around uh, thank you. You and Alan Hain are the only YouTube channels I watch. You give me the commercial perspective. Alan gives me a home respect. Keep it up. Thank you. Appreciate that. Oliver, I will uh, take that as a compliment being joined in Alan's uh, community there in, in the same sense with him. What's the best way to treat or prevent fire ants? Big box granulars don't seem to work. I use two different products. Uh, one is a, a bait. It's called Advion. You can order on Amazon. I get it from my Harold's rep, it comes in a two pound jug. And again, it's a bait. So we try to put it out, um, you know, soon as the weather warms, like now, or maybe wait a little bit longer. Uh, as the weather warms, the fire ants feed more actively. So the bait, from my understanding, you know, it doesn't last that long. Once you put it out, the ants have to kind of get it in a few days. I think it actually has sugar coating on it. So the ants find it. And you don't want to sprinkle it on top of the fire ant bed. You want to just, it literally has like kind of a salt shaker type lid on it. And you walk around and you just squeeze it and it spread it all over the yard. And that two pound jug covers a lot of uh, ground. I can't remember if it if it's like two acres or one acre or something. Anyway, it, it covers, it goes a long way. 
And then the other product I use is called Top Choice by Bayer, and it's more of a, a contact bait. You know, it gets um, not a bait. That's the wrong word. The Advion's a bait. But, you know, you, you spread it out all over the whole yard. You want to blanket the entire yard, and it gets – and it actually works for a year, a 12-month product. And the ants, when they crawl through it, it kills them. Now, the bait, the Advion, I usually do it like twice a year. I'll do it like April or May and then come back again about August or September and do it again. Um, and so if, even if I put out the top joist, if I was to get an, a fire ant, you know, at some point I could put the Advion out, um, a little bit of that. Uh, Advion is going to be less expensive, but, um, you know, like I said, the top choice lasts for a year. So what I've been doing if I've got a, a small to medium sized yard, I typically use the top choice and just do it one time for the whole year. Uh, if it's a large yard, a lot of times I'll go with Advion. It's a little bit cheaper product, especially for you know large properties. Uh, does anybody sell emerald zoysia seed to the public, or is it only available in sod? I'm you know I know you can buy some zoysia seed. I'm not sure about emerald zoysia. If that's a, some of these grass types are like hybrid. Hybrid grasses, but you know that the the seed is sterile. So I don't know if that particular one, if you can grow from seed. But I I have people lately ask me about growing zoysia from seed. I don't think I've ever met a single person who's successfully grown in um, zoysia. Now I know that people have. I have people tell me that, but I I've, I've never known anybody that's done it. Uh, but you got to want to wait till it gets hot. And, um, you know, hopefully you, you can keep it watered really good and get get it a lot of to grow. Because like the way it is, like with Bermuda, if you get like a little bit to grow, it'll spread like crazy and fill in the rest of it. You know, I don't even worry about it. I'm like, just get 10 percent of it to grow. You'll be fine. Zoysia is spread so slow that, you know, you really need some good coverage. So is a spartan zero turn a good option i haven't never i've never used a spartan but i've seen them they they really uh cool looking but cool looking is not what i'm always going for so i i'm sorry i don't have experience with spartan we don't have a dealer in my area i need to if i go to the gie expo this next year i need to just get on there and try one out and uh you know i like to test drive some of these i'm seeding a new two acer lawn I'm a oh, two acre lawn in central Alabama. I need something for erosion control with the warm season grass. What's the best seed mix to use or just pick one type of grass? Um, let's see, you, you want erosion control on two acre lawn in central Alabama. Uh, I mean, you're, I, I'm, I'm sorry if I'm misunderstanding here. Like, I, are you wanting to put just something for erosion control over the entire two acres or are you wanting to, is there certain areas you need to put out for erosion control? Because most of the stuff that they sell for erosion control, and I did this last year at my house, I need some erosion control. You go buy some, it's, it's like a, at a seed store, it'd be like a highway mix and it's got every, all kind of junk in there, but it's not going to make a very nice lawn. I'll just tell you in, in Alabama. So, um, yeah, I, I would if you're trying to grow two acres, I would recommend watching my, my experiments on growing in my lawn with and we talked about this some on, on tonight. I don't know if you're on here or not, but we talked about growing in uh Bermuda lawn. I I'm growing in like four acres over the past year or so. Uh, if you can just plug Bermuda and fertilize it and you have a nice Bermuda lawn, and that's gonna be a lot better than anything you're going to get I, I don't know about warm season grasses it's going to work for erosion control i think you buy those mixes it's going to be a bunch of cool season junk it's just going to, to me it's going to look like weeds uh so that's my thoughts joseph somebody else might can chat me in there all right james says at robert bennett overseeding makes me think you already have some centipede there to work with so i'd fertilize and grow the centipede you have if you're overseeding into bermuda aerate first okay yeah it, yeah I, that's probably a good point because i um i wasn't sure if you were already had grass to to deal with or not but yeah um i guess the term overseeding does kind of hint that you already have some grass to work with but yeah a, a lot of times people ask me like jason should i should i put some seed out of lady today say so i want to put some bermuda seed out and i say she already has Bermuda, and I—I I mean, like a full lawn of Bermuda. She, I want to put some more seed out, 
And I said, oh, well, hold on. Before you do that, let's talk about it. And she was, it was in between two little garden homes and the grass not growing. It was not growing because it's not getting enough sunlight for Bermuda. So I kind of talked her off of the buying the seed and said, hey, you know, you could put some some zoysia here and that would look good or you could landscape it and just put pine straw or mulch or something but um you know a lot of times our warm season grasses seeding is not always necessary it will really spread just from you know just fertilizer and watch it grow zoysia again it like I said, it's super slow but yeah when you sometimes when you see now centipede i think a lot of times it's centipede is centipede i'm not sure how many varieties they are but a lot of times when people are gonna have have bermuda that was the other thing i told this lady she's gonna have bermuda and then she want to put some bermuda seed out there in the bermuda i said you, you're gonna be mixing two different kinds of bermuda because the bermuda you have in your yard and, and you're gonna go buy some bermuda and it's not gonna be the same bermuda and you just you know if as if it was gonna grow there it would have already spread on its own all right this guy says south texas i have no crabgrass well you know mate i hope i hope you're i hope it's true um uh, that you have no crabgrass. If you have no crabgrass, you may not worry about the pre-emergent anyway. These are some ongoing com conversations we had. Uh, if you have no crabgrass, then I wouldn't worry about it. Um, but it's possible you have crabgrass and you just ain't see it yet. It may be small. So anyway, but yeah, you should know from, I guess, past years whether you had anything or not. Uh, go, Jason. Do your customers inquire more about organic fertilizer? Uh, not really. That's probably because I live in Alabama. If we move to a other places i'm sure i would get asked more about that there i know there's a market for it in a lot of places molecular scientist james says i would not apply prodiamine. i mean hit with the fur and mow get it thickened up and take the way weeds out later in my opinion all right and aldo beltron hi jason all righty and true green is a billion dollar company there you go man this is for the the weightlifter guy um you can make a billion if you can follow True Green's path. My friend Paul Jameson here says, uh, Paul, author of best selling author, I should say, uh, Cut That Grass and Make That Cash. I actually listened to the audio book, Paul, and I mean, and leave your review, but I, I did listen to the whole thing and thought it was great. James, uh, Robert's got a question for you. The yard is about 1,000 area. A thousand square feet, mostly bare dirt and centipede sod. I'm trying to get it to fill in. We are getting temps between 80s and 50s a night, but dropping to 70 next week. Yeah, I mean, why don't you just? Um, yeah, I mean, you could you could seed if you want to, but you could also fertilize it and and just let it fill in on its own. All right. Hi, Jason from Paul. Good to see you, Paul. Thanks for watching. Zoys is yelling in some areas. No pets. Where do I start? Uh, you know, I, I, again, it's hard without seeing a picture. I, if it, I wonder if, if you possibly have some sort of fungus, like what does the yellowing look like? Um, or it, it could just be it's early in the year and some people like their grass is not as green as they want it to get to be. So uh, in, in some ways, Sean, I would just encourage you without seeing a picture, but I try to tell other people like, just, just give it, get a few weeks. Let's get some warm weather maybe uh, cut it if you still got a lot of dormant grass and let the sunlight get down there and start getting some new growth and and then see if that improves things so that that would be one tip um but it's hard for me to know if, as far as what's causing it to be yellow uh let's see here accident i keep zooming in on my screen i'm not sure if y'all can see that but uh let's see what spray gun do you recommend i am using a roller pump with an 8.5 horse honda 100 gallon tank i got the old let's go green spray guns that just about all my competitors use and it works great and they're very simple to work on it's just got a little kit that you can take out and replace if, if something goes wrong with them but that's the gun that i use and they work they work excellent learning bonsai i like that now, the last two years, I've watched YouTube, and this year I did. I started an LLC in New York mowing lawns. Wish me luck. That's great. I hope um, – I know New York – for us in Alabama, you know, we think New York's just all concrete. But I actually went to upstate New York and saw that there's nice, beautiful scenery up there. So I hope, hope it goes well for you. 
All right, Jacob, I have a mulchy lawn and can't seem to get seed to the soil. I'm sort of at a loss. Could you help? Uh, well, I'm not sure what a mulchy lawn is. You know, like, uh, I'm not sure I understand that concept. What kind of grass are you trying to grow? And, you know, maybe you could aerate and then, then see. I know a lot of times up north they, they aerate and overseed at the same time. And so, anyway, yeah, you may or even have to bring in some dirt or something. All right, Robert James, I'd scrap the bare areas and cover the seed about a quarter of an inch of water. But Jason is right, I'm not applying any dimension there. Um, how long does it take for St. Augustine to spread? Uh, I'm going to find that out this year, Sonia, because I uh, have got some in my yard that I put out late last year, and it's rooted, and I want to see how fast it spreads. But I think it's pretty quick, uh, I'll be honest with you. It, you know, it put, you talk about putting out those long runners to spread. St. Augustine, it, it's uh, pretty aggressive with that. So I, I, think, it, I think it goes – uh, pretty fast. I know that's a, a generic answer, but um, maybe not quite as fast as Bermuda, but faster than Zoysia or uh, Centipede probably would be my guess. Nice backdrop. Paul, at, I'm at the lake and this is, I'm out on the back porch listening to the frogs chirp at me. What's a good iron supplement for Bermuda grass that can be had from the regular hardware stores? Man, I, I I don't know. I don't know. I just I don't have any they have to choose from, and um, you I guess you go like Ace Hardware or something, or go to Lowe's or Home Depot and see what they got. Uh, some of the fertilizers have iron in them. I'm not sure if I can help you on that. Crooked neck, LOL. All right, not sure what that even means. Um, just noticed my pole is finally dying because it's so dry. It took longer than previously. It took a month. Thanks for the recommendation. Yeah, and, and mow it and, and put it out of its misery. Do you have any cool season lawns here in North Georgia? We have about 50-50. I don't. I'm sorry. I, I do know how to kill the cool season lawns. Look at here. Caleb and uh, Brittany Allman, my friends from uh, up north, have come popped on to say hello. Thank you for being a part. Hello from Alabama, and I'm in Alabama. I'm in Alabama. Hi, legend from Australia. Can you say hi? It's Jason Creel. Love your channel. You know, I get. I don't know what Australians think when they hear me talk. I guess probably about the same thing I think when I hear them talk. You know, it's like I didn't know anybody talk like that. Um, anyway, what's up, Jason? Quick question: What would you recommend to keep a lawn healthy, thick, and green? Uh, boy, that's a broad one, isn't it? Um, how do you how do you uh, bring about world peace? Bowling, watering, whatever. A lot of times, I found in my customers the ones that look the best, and I'll, I'll do the same thing to a lot of yards. And actually, their mowing practices it has a has a lot to do with it. Oh man, some kind of insect got my my drink. I told you this is bad. It's screened in. Opinion on ironite does it work? How can apply? You know, I, my friend James been commenting on here, and he said there's a town near me. It's called Irondale, and then Birmingham is called the Iron City. And you know, Alabama and Auburn play each other in football. They call it the Iron Bowl. <laughs> we were telling putting the iron on the yard. He's like, you think? You think you need any iron in Irondale or in the Iron City? Yeah, you know, we just don't we don't do iron because our soil has plenty of iron in it. So I'm sorry, I'm not my iron questions. Um, thank you, James. I do appreciate James helping out, contributing. What weed and turf uh, type tall fescue here in Dallas? So I, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. I used to call it in a cool season. Um, most of the products we use are going to kill the grass. What time is it in Australia? Good day from uh, good day. Good on you, mate. Is that do y'all see that? I spent the 
Today from Melbourne, Australia. I know there is big time lawn care business in Australia. So appreciate being on the channel. I guess it's probably morning for you over there. What's it looking like on Tuesday? Still money here. Hi, uh, Jason. Cool season. Man, it might be Tuesday. I don't even know what day it is in Australia. Cool season line pitch is 7.4. is 1.60. more. Should I apply? James, if you're awake, you can help this guy. I'm sorry. I, I, don't, I don't. You see why I had James on here as a guest one time? He knows the answer to this kind of hard stuff. Uh, but our, our soil almost always is too acidic in my area. And we, you know, we're always putting lime out trying to raise the pH. So, anyway, what's up, y'all? Just got in, did a landscape job, and planted seven shrubs today, actually. Then scout coming I don't know if I've ever remember anybody from India being on here but so that's that's pretty cool and appreciate you following the channel. Just starting out. Yeah, I'm not familiar with Longstar. I've heard of it, but I don't don't use that one. All right, it's yellow, yellow, not dormant. I'm sure somebody help you in. If cool, that would be uh, all right. Yeah, well, the best we start to thing. Oh, here we go. This guy was saying. Live in the lawn. Oh man, uh, I don't even know. Bluegrass, uh, man. I that would make more a homeowner grade mower I get up Honda engine that to me it helps a lot. Um, what is uh, would appreciate your thoughts on spraying liquid iron uh, and a with a PGR out of a ride on one point five quarts per thousand. Oh man, I uh, I don't know. I I'm using that. Uh, that what am I using? Uh, Growth regulator, you know, I'm trying to think of the name of the one I'm, I'm using. I'm, I'm sorry. It, what time is No wonder I'm losing my thoughts here. I can't think after a certain time. All right. Living with a Honda. Thumbs up. Can Zoysia be real mold like Bermuda? I'm talking like, uh, I think certain time types can. Um, my, I got a customer that's got Zeon Zoysia. I'm pretty sure they can be mowed at a half inch. There may be some other varieties. Section with no grass, recommend seed and common Bermuda on the other side of the house. It's common or go with a hybrid. I would get a hybrid. You can get like Pennington Princess 77 or some of those. How's the plug Bermuda looking, by the way? Uh, it's looking pretty good, except they tore up my front yard with a septic tank in the backyard and just tilled it all up and trying to make it more level. I think it's going to be looking great, though. I hope you all know about Black Diamond Trimmer String. Uh, yeah, I have heard of that, and that's great. I'm going to fly through these and get to the end and we're going to wrap it up. You look like a wood shop teacher. 
I'll take that as a compliment. Is it too late to start this season? About to get started this week. Get started doing what? I'm not sure. Uh, how do I get a lawn business started? I got about 600 videos on the channel. Don't see common Bermuda, just plant plugs or sprigs. I agree. I'm in Georgia, my lawn. I have Kentucky 31. I forget your question um, about. Um, I forget your question about that. If you want hybrid, it's not that expensive. Tip tough's like 350 a pallet. If a year you can plug it. Yeah, I mean you can buy the Bermuda uh, 419 Bermuda around here for like 100 bucks a pallet or 110. It's so cheap. Any tips for dealing with black spot on roses? Uh, sorry, <laughs> not, not at the moment. Uh, hello, how are you doing? Appreciate you joining the channel here. Legend, mate, cheers. Cheers to you. Iron Eye is a popular box store iron supplement, but the nitrogen might be what gets the color in that product unless it's foliar spray. I think iron you is about, about staining stuff. Hey, Jason, a couple of my St. Austin lawns are showing some signs of chlorosis in spots would you apply liquid iron to help man you guys are hammering me on the iron i uh i know you must be doing bermuda there's a lot of knowledge here i'm sorry I, we need to have an iron specialist on here to can talk about iron um hey jason dan wood here in central illinois appreciate your videos and all the info one of my favorite channels appreciate you watching for the kind words you're breaking up it's because it's getting late and the internet shuts down here after 10 o'clock not really uh all right that rm43 will kill it all i think that's the person can't hear you it's glitching and matthew i don't think 7.4 is bad but you can fertilize with ammonium sulfate or sulfate potash to supplement instead of straight up sulfur app so that's talking about lowering the ph r.i.p Thank you for the live show. I have a question. My yard is rocky. How do I treat it let the grass grow? You might want to bring in some better dirt and top dress it. Podium is the PGR. That's what I'm using on my yard is podium. It's a growth regulator. T-Nex is an, another one. I've been using podium, and it's worked great for me. What can I use to kill POA? I use Celsius, Certainty, Revolver. You know, these are on warm season grasses. Negate, Katana, Tribute Total. Thank you for all the advice. Hey, guys. It is my bedtime. Appreciate you guys watching in, whether live or on replay. We will plan to be back Monday night next week. I've reached out uh, to some guests and got some awesome feedback. So I'm going to try to – sometimes I'll be on here by myself. Sometimes I'll have guests. But you guys are great, and thank you for all the questions. And thanks for the easy ones that make me look smart and for the hard ones that give me motivation to learn more. What should I do first? You got a lot of weeds. You got to just look at, give some blanket application and take it layer by layer. Have a good night, and we will see you guys later. You can watch this on replay if you missed it. I think it'll be on YouTube tomorrow. Just go to the Lawn Care Life channel and subscribe if you want to be notified of future videos. I'm out. See you later. Bye.